ocean-going ships are always surrounded by water. But ironically, apart from being a steady supply of cooling medium, seawater has very limited uses when it comes to shipboard operations and human requirements due to its high salinity. Which is why ships are equipped with what is called a freshwater generator or a desalination plant which is a machine that drastically lowers the salinity of seawater. In simple terms, it converts seawater into fresh water by removing the salt, either through distillation or reverse osmosis. For cargo ships, the most commonly used type is the distillation plant. And in this video, you will see both the starting and stopping procedures. For most ships, distillation plants can only be operated when the main engine is running at navigation full speed. This is because the heating medium it uses comes from the jacket water outlet of the main engine, which typically has a temperature range between 85 to 90 degrees Celsius. Although there are some distillation plant designs which can also use steam from the boiler as the heating medium, it is recommended that the ship should be far enough from land and in an area with deep water to ensure that the seawater that will go into the distillate plant will be clean and potentially be free of pollutants. You may recall that I have made a previous video about the operating principles of the distillation plant. Here in this video, I'll be showing you the actual operating procedures. The first step is to line up the seawater line and open the valves starting from the ejector overboard valve. Next is the seawater inlet valve to the ejector pump. and then the condenser inlet and outlet valves. These lines draw seawater from the main seawater line coming from the sea chest. Once the ejector and condenser lines are established, the ejector pump can now be started. The ejector pump is basically just a centrifugal pump, which delivers seawater through an eductor. The velocity of the seawater passing through the nozzle in the adductor creates a venturi effect, which then generates suction in this line. This continuous suction causes the pressure inside the shell to become lower than atmospheric pressure, or in simple terms, a vacuum. The next step is to let seawater into the distillation plant. This feed water line draws seawater from the upper part of the condenser, which in effect makes the feed water preheated. Once the valve is opened, the feed water enters from the bottom and into the evaporator, which is basically a series of tubes encased in a compartment where the heating medium flows, thereby facilitating heat exchange. Here we can see the seawater flowing from the evaporator. Remember the ductor line? The seawater and any other particles get suctioned through this line and gets ejected out into the sea. Now that we have established a continuous flow of feed water, we have good vacuum inside the shell, and a continuous flow of cooling seawater through the condenser, it's time to heat things up by diverting the flow of the main engine jacket water outlet into the evaporator. As you can see, he's doing it slowly so as not to cause sudden fluctuations 
in the jacket water line pressure. Once the evaporator heating is lined up, the temperature will start to rise and we can observe the feed water reacting to the increase in temperature. As we all know, pure water has a boiling point of 100 degrees Celsius at atmospheric pressure. Seawater's boiling point will be slightly higher. Now, as I mentioned earlier, the jacket water temperature is around 85 to 90 degrees Celsius. Under normal atmospheric pressure, that won't be enough to evaporate seawater. But thanks to the ejector pump and the adductor, the pressure inside the shell is maintained below atmospheric. In effect, the lower atmospheric pressure causes the boiling point of the seawater to also become lower. I won't bore you with the mathematical details, but if you want to learn more about this, a good starting point would be the combination gas law which is derived from Boyle's Law, Charles' Law, and Gay-Lussac's Law. Now, since the feed water is already boiling, the steam rises up to the condenser, where it is cooled down and condenses into distilled water. There is a water collecting tray just beneath the condenser tubes, and it leads down to this pipe, which is the suction line of the distillate pump. The distillate pump delivers the distilled water from the condenser to the freshwater storage tank. But before it does, the water needs to pass through the salinometer, which measures its salinity. The alarm is usually set to 5 ppm. If the salinity is higher than that, an alarm is triggered and the solenoid valve automatically opens and returns the distilled water back into the shell. During startup, it is normal for the salinity to be high during the first few minutes, but eventually it will go down to the required value, and distilled water will be delivered to the freshwater storage tanks. If in case the salinometer malfunctions or is switched off, the solenoid valve will remain open, thereby preventing untested water to go to the storage tanks. In the previous video, a lot of viewers asked where does the salt go? As we have all seen, this is a continuous flow system, meaning it never dries up. So the salt remains dissolved in the seawater that hasn't evaporated. As soon as that seawater flows out of the evaporator tubes and into the shell, it will be suctioned by the eductor and pumped out into the sea. Once freshwater production is stable, the last step is to switch on the treatment dosing pump. For a detailed explanation of this water treatment, you can check out this video. Now, the distillate plant needs to be stopped before the ship arrives in port. Specifically, it needs to be stopped before the main engine is slowed down for maneuvering and while the ship is still in deep water. It's basically just the reverse of startup procedures, but I still think it's worth seeing it get done. First will be to switch off the dosing pump and the salinometer. Next will be to stop the flow of heating into the evaporator.
Let the evaporator cool down thoroughly. This is to ensure that no more evaporation will take place in order to prevent salt and scale buildup within the evaporator tubes. You can verify if it's sufficiently cooled down if the evaporator temperature is the same as the seawater temperature. Once cooled down, stop the ejector pump, close the feed water valve, close the condenser inlet and outlet valves, and the ejector pump inlet valve. After that, open the vacuum breaker. Finally, close the ejector pump overboard valve. Additionally, if the ship is expected to stay in port for more than a day, it's good practice to drain the remaining feed water in the evaporator. I hope you enjoyed the video and stay tuned for the next one.